Okay, we're going to constrain one object to another object using the parent offset matrix. So in this case, uh, we're going to have maybe a prop that is a child of one hand, and we want to constrain it to another hand. So in my example here, just sort of pretend that this is one arm, and this is a hand, and this is the other arm, and this is the other hand. We want to constrain this object to this hand. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is we'll select the prop, and then the two hands, and we'll go into the node editor. And I'll just arrange these so that'll make it more convenient to hook things up. I'm going to put the right hand on the top and the left hand on the bottom, and the prop over to the side. So to do this, we'll start off by creating a, a multiply matrix node. So when you're in the node editor, just hit the tab key. It'll bring up this little uh, search box. And you can start typing in the name. And when you see multi matrix, that's the one that you want. With the node selected, you then want to go to the attribute editor. And on the matrix in, you need to add two or one new item. Or two new items. And from there, we'll go to the right hand. And we'll get the world matrix. And we're going to plug that into uh, the first matrix input. Then we'll go to the other hand and do the world inverse matrix and put that into the second matrix input. <clears throat> At this point, this is really all you need to be able to constrain the prop to the other hand. So if I hook this up, You'll see now that the prop is constrained to the other hand, even though the prop is a child of this hand. So one thing to note, the order of operation is, is important here. If you were to do the world inverse matrix first, and then the world matrix second, the constraint uh, won't work correctly. So you need to do the world matrix first and the inverse matrix second, and then your constraint will work. Now to make this useful, we want to be able to constrain our prop either to the left hand or the right hand. So what we need to do now is add in a blend matrix node. We can do that by going back to the node editor, hitting the tab key, and type in blend until you see blend matrix. And we're going to put that in between our multiply matrix and the prop. The blend matrix connected, we will need to add one target. So if you take the output from the multiple matrix, put that into the blend matrix, just look for the target and connect it that way. And you can take the output and put that back into the offset parent matrix. So 
So now you have the ability to have a blend. On one hand, to the other hand. So to make this more convenient for the animators, we'll add a blend attribute uh, to the prop. So if you select the prop, then go into modify add attribute. I'll just call this blend. Make sure the minimum is zero, the maximum is one. Make sure it's float, and then just do OK. So now you should have a blend attribute. Going back to the prop, we can select the blend. And plug that into the envelope. As you can see, the blend is now connected to the envelope of the blend matrix. So now animators themselves can easily blend from one hand to another hand. So the nice thing uh, for the animators with using uh, uh, the parent offset matrix is that their transforms are free. They don't get locked up like they would with a, a normal constraint. So this way the animator can still animate uh, however they want. And then when you do a blend, it retains that offset. They can just keep animating.